Howdy folks, welcome back to Faded Pink Garage. Today I'm going to work on replacing the, the regulator shafts that the door handle and the window crank handle run on. So it's a little spline shaft that comes out from the back of the door that the handle's attached to. So I just got my delivery from Mid-50 recently, so uh, I ordered shafts for both doors. And I also ordered new door handles and window cranks for the inside. They say that I guess these have changed, the pattern has changed, the size or whatever has changed depending on manufacturer and vendor. So they recommend when you replace these to order new handles so to ensure that they fit. So be aware of that. I also got some extra stuff. Um, the, the little guides that the window rides on, I'm gonna to try to replace those since I'm, I've gotta take everything apart. Um, and I'm also gonna to try to put the inserts in for the passenger side door armrest. Um, from the factory on this truck, it did come with a armrest on the driver's door, but not an armrest on the passenger door. And it takes a little, you gotta notch this out um, and I'll show you how I do that. And you got to insert a little clip. Now the other, the driver's door already has that. So I'm planning on making a template of that, reversing it and, and using it for an outlet on this door. Um, I don't think that'll be an issue. Uh, my biggest concern is getting all the uh, screws out of the mechanisms to get everything removed so I can access it. I believe that it does take a welder to reinstall these, but I'll look at the instructions as we go along and share that. Uh, there's no reason you couldn't do this with the doors on. The reason I have these off is in my previous video, I replaced the weather stripping all the way around and that's much easier with the door off. So uh, I went ahead and left it off to do this project, but I would have no uh, cause to take the doors off, I don't think, to do this on the truck. So uh, don't let that bother you. Um, and maybe I'll find that it would be easier to do it on the truck with the way gravity works and being laying flat here. I don't know. So uh, we're going to get started. I'm going to work on disassembling this. Uh, you can see what I'm using for a window crank right now. Good old vice grips. Um, so in this, this one here, you can see maybe uh, it's actually got a hole drilled through it because it was so worn out. I actually drilled a hole through the old door handle and just ran a cotter key through it to keep so it works. These spline tools completely rounded off as are the, uh, the window crank. So well overdue. Uh, these things aren't cheap. When I order them, I think they're ten or twenty dollars a piece. It might have been ten bucks a piece. So uh, prepare for that. But I don't know what else you're going to do with these wear out. You're kind of. I'm just happy you can get them. So uh, beggars can't be choosers. So we'll, uh, we'll get started. I would recommend soaking these screws down with some penetrating oil before you start, I mean, maybe a day or two. I went ahead and I started doing that, uh, or I did that uh, last weekend when I was working on the doors. So they've already been soaked, but I've got them broke loose a little bit now. So I'm gonna just squirt a little bit more on there. You don't want these breaking off in there. Um, so it doesn't hurt to have a little extra lubrication on them, penetrating oil. I like PB Blaster, um, but if you want just to buy a can of stuff, uh, but really the best thing I've ever found was mixing ATF and acetone in a 50-50 mix and using that. That seems to work better than anything you can buy at the store, but it's a little more annoying to your own container and stuff. But uh, this stuff works good. WD-40 is not, not a great penetrating fluid. That's more of a water displacement fluid, which is what the WD stands for. But uh, uh, there's lots of coal oil and stuff. There's lots of good stuff out there. I got this thing out, but it was kind of a pain in the butt. So visualize with me, it looks like this inside the door, but the, there's a window um, bar that runs that, uh, let's see. Yeah, that runs the, the window up and down. It's part of that regulator system. And that kind of goes in front of this. So I'm thinking it'd probably be easier to take the window stuff out maybe first. I don't know, but I had to get, get it out. I had to roll the window down a little bit and then flip this, drop this down and flip it over to kind of work it out like that. So that might be kind of a pain in the butt to put back in, but we'll see. Um, I just looked up the instructions for this and uh, they make it sound like it's not for the faint of heart and they recommend sending them in to be rebuilt, but uh, I'm not afraid of a little challenge. Uh, what I need to do is grind off 
these welds. So you'll have to have a welder to do this, put it back together. Grind these off and delt, very carefully take this apart because there's a spring and a, a, little, a little button they said looks like a rivet. You don't want to lose or misplace and all that. So if you do that, I guess you're hosed. Um, so we'll uh, grind that off and go from there. Give you a closer look at the back side of this or the, the, this thing here. So there's a spring in there. You don't want to lose. And there was something else you're referencing. Um, and these are the things I need to grind to get this disassembled. Okay, got it all ground down. So now the trick is to get this thing apart without it flying apart. Um, so. Hopefully you can see this okay. So there's a little raised spot right here. Well, in there, you can see that. Let me get behind the camera here. See that spring in there? So that's what you don't want to lose. Um, and then as the handle operates, that that's the, that's the spring that uh, lets the handle kick back. If I can do that, I don't know if you can see that. There you go, see that? So that's when you, when you act, actuate the handle, it kicks it back up. So don't want to lose that. In fact, just the way I'm holding this with all that grind out is probably kind of dangerous thing can spring apart. So I'm going to try to take this apart now and uh, try not to lose anything. Um, but you can see how that embossed is right there. That's where that spring sits. And there's another spring, a coil spring that's in there as well. So we don't lose those parts. Well, I'm tapping on that and it's kind of wanting to bend it, so that's no good either. Uh, for obvious reasons. So I've got them all ground down flush, but it's still not wanting to pop apart. I've just about got it. They're all popped loose except for one. But it is bent in the bracket, but once I get it apart, I can straighten that out in the vise. I'm not too paranoid about it. I need to take a little bit more material off this one, I think. Okay, I think I got it. So I'm going to delicately, there we go. Okay, got it apart. Being very careful so far. Again, we're gonna straighten that out a little bit. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm not, not too worried about that. I'll give you a close up of what this guy looks like here. So here we go. And I was using a couple pieces of angle iron so that it kind of just sat on these sides here so it got pretty close. Um, you don't want to set you don't want to get this spring on top of whatever you're doing either so make sure your cognizant of that kind of sticks out off the side here so that's what we look like on the inside so now i've got to pull this thing apart uh, and i assume there's tension on that spring so I'll be real careful when i pull it apart and see how that shaft comes out of there oh yeah it does come flying so be careful it is under tension but this is that little piece they were talking about um, I don't think you can buy these, so don't lose them. And if that's broken, I don't know if you can get that or not. I, I did order some extra parts, but I don't remember seeing that as a part. So I'm not sure what your options there are. And here's a little spring there. Let me get that other shaft. Here's my new one. And that spring goes in an indent on there. So that's just a nut shape, it's like a nut cert. So I think I gotta unspring this and see what happens. Get you a good look at that, because I might need this if I come flying apart and I've gotta put it back together. So there's what that looks like. smooth so I assume that's going to kind of work itself off of there and then just coerce it a little bit try not to 
put it in any bind that's going to break it. I might need to get a little screwdriver. There. See if we can pry that out of there like this. Nice and easy. Okay, so it just barely goes in there once it's loosened up. So I'll try to pop that off of there without winging it through the shop, which I've been known to do. That's kind of a tight fit. I can see that other one's going to be kind of a, see that? So it goes on there pretty tight, so you can see that. So, okay, so we got that one off. So this, I'm not sure how that's stuck in there, if that's just, I'm not sure how the shaft held in there, I'm going to guess just tension, so it'll probably just come off, I'm going to go, oh, maybe I don't have to. That might work there. Guy can use a socket for this kind of stuff. You set a socket that's just, this might actually be too big. Yeah, I'm gonna go, go grab a socket that this just barely slides through, and then I can set that on the other side to hold it. There we go, so I just got a socket, so that'll fit in there. And the idea is I can hold this over that like that, and drive that through. Yeah, it's just coming. I'm not bending that up. I think it's all right. There we go. Out with the old, in with the new. New one fits in there kind of loose, which I think is normal. So now, oh, you know what I didn't note is where the orientation of that slot was when this was put in there. <clears throat> Let's see, I can probably guess. I'm going to say it was right there. Spring back on there. So in theory, I can have the spring on there <clears throat> before I reassemble this anyway. So, Let's see how that goes. I tell you what, that is made for it. It just barely fits. Somebody's probably watching this going, why don't you just do such and such? And go right in. Hang on. Because I don't know what I'm doing most of the time. So I get to do things the hard way. There we go. Okay, so spring is on there. Spring is in the air. And that goes in there. But it needs to be tensioned, so... I believe that I need to twist this guy. There we go, probably into that spot there. Oh, nope, that ain't enough, so we're gonna go a little farther. Boy, that seems like too much, but well, it is what it is. It doesn't wanna pull itself apart here. Uh oh. Oh, and the big other one just kinda of popped out there, so. Okay, so. Got it back together, I think, the way it's supposed to. It's tensioned just a little bit, about like it was. So I hope this is right, because I just put the, so this is up there, the spring holes down there. I might actually go look at this video again just to make sure I put it back together before I weld it, but I think I think we're okay there. So I'm gonna take and, and uh, put this plate in the vise and straighten it back out. Okay, so that's there. Now I've got to put this little thing back together and I've got to remember how that works. Funny how when you're doing this, it's like, oh, I'll remember everything. It was only two seconds ago. Yeah, that ain't always the case. So this should go off to the side like that. And that little spring goes in there. 
this thing stuck out there so you can see where this is going to be tricky to retension this thing so it doesn't go flying while I put that piece back together Now this part I can see being a big pain in the butt, and I'm not completely sure. You know, it might be easier actually to put this on and then put the spring into it. Let me see what that would do, because then a guy could just kind of wedge the spring in there. It ain't got anywhere else to go. But before I do that, I'm gonna clean these. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna clean these little tabs up just a little bit. Right here. I'm just gonna touch those, just just kiss those little bits so they slide in there a little bit easier. Okay, so I just kind of just cleaned up the edges there, so I'm not fighting it. When this goes back together, oh let me fix my camera angle here. Off to the side. Sorry about that. Ooh, doo -doo -doo. We gotta move it. Um, amateur error here. Okay, so we got this in there. We're gonna put this on like that. Hopefully, it'll kind of go in there. A little tappy tap, maybe. Okay, so that's mostly back together. But of course, we're missing the spring. So, my idea put this in now, try to get that. Oh, pretty. Oh, jeez. Oh jeez, lost the part I'm just telling you nobody to lose. Well, that's how it goes. Thankfully I don't clean my floor, so everything looks like what I'm looking for. Okay, I found it. Okay, try that again. A little less sloppy this time, maybe. Oh, okay, that doesn't fit in. Oh no, it does. Since it's not. So I'm going to try to just pop that in there. Sound effects there. Um, this could get ugly, I bet, so bear with me. You can see where this is going to be potentially frustrating. Unless I just get kind of lucky. Okay, I think it's in there. It looks like it did before. So, but I don't want to let go of this guy because it's going to fly apart. So I'm going to go find a, uh, grab a pair of vice grips here to keep that clamp together. I think we're good. Now I just need a spot welder back together and one down. Okay, here we go. So she's tack, I'm sorry, I'm focus that. Tack welded back together there. Um, this is a galvanized coated material, so don't breathe this stuff in when you're welding it. Try to avoid that. Oh, it's still a little hot. Imagine that. Um, so again, one done. So we'll try the window regulator for this door next, and then uh, the other door will be rinse and repeat, hopefully. I've decided not to put the door handle mechanism back in until I get the window out, or the window mechanism out, the crank stuff. I think it'd be a little easier to put the, to take the window out and then the door, put the door back in and put the window back in in that order. So I'm gonna leave that out for now, and I'm gonna try to get the window stuff out next. Okay, now I need to get the I need to get the glass separated from the regulator so it connects right here. I've taken the, the screws out of this side and the bolts out of this side to hold the bottom of the of the runners in. Um, but I'm not I've not done this before, so I'm not completely sure. I might need to unbolt the whole regulator 
and while it's loose, maybe it'll allow me to shift it off over here. So I'll try that, I guess, and see what happens. Um, when I ordered these shafts from M50, I also ordered all new screws. I didn't know what kind of shape they were going to be in, but I would recommend doing that. Um, this case you're going to get rusty or something. They're, they weren't expensive, so I figured just add that to the order. I also ordered new screws from a door, the door panel there. Figured that wouldn't hurt. Um, one trick if you're doing this in, uh, and all these screws are com uh, interchangeable. If you're doing this with the door on the truck, once I get the window unlatched, of course it would fall through the door or whatever. Um, what I've done in the past is just get wood shims like you have for a house door, for shimming a house door. And you can pull the window up and just put the little wood shims down in here to bind the window to keep it from falling down. So I've done that uh, before on other window projects or door projects and that works just fine. So, oh, well, regular thing fell down. So that's something in it. Okay, so I'm going to slide the regulator for the window. Quite sure what I'm doing here. This thing's even supposed to slide off the end. I think it does. And I also ordered a new um, roller, or whatever this thing's called, to replace that. I figured it was shot. So. Okay, there we go. So, windows unhooked. So I unbolted the regulator, slid it off. So now I'm going to slide the window up. Which again, I'm. It's easy for me. Okay, the window's up out of the way. Regulator's got to kind of. out so now according to the instructions that mid 50 has when doing this is we need to drill these rivets I need to turn this thing to the correct orientation which I'll go double check I think the window has to be all the way up now to do that and then uh, then we drill those out and this thing comes apart there's a little spring in here as well, and I, I went ahead and bought a new spring because that's supposedly, um, they break really easy, so spring here. Um, it's a 1103-SP56, so they must be specific for 56 versus 53 to 55, so it's called a window regulator inner shaft spring, so order some of those, they were cheap. And that's one thing nice about mid 50s side, I think it actually, when you go to order one part, It'll say, yeah, you might want this other part too. Be like, yep, probably do. Thank you very much. Oh, and there's the little nylon roller thing, I think. Door blast roller, 52 to 60. So, um, I think that replaces that one. So, anyway, I'm gonna go look at the instructions on that, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so I think I understand this correctly. So you're supposed to move it basically to the position of the window being all the way down and then drill out that rivet, mark the gear on the other side, and then the, this gear needs to be drilled out big enough you can get a screw head back through it um, because you're drilling rivets out, but you're going to replace them with bolts, I guess. But I got a rivet gun. I might, I might just rivet it back together if I can do that. I don't, I don't know if that's possible with the space and whatever. And I don't even know if I have bolts and screws to put this thing back together. I don't think it came with any, um, which is annoying, but whatever. Um, so anyway, I'm just gonna take take these rivets off, take it, take it apart, but it says, you know, do it in this extreme position for rivet number one, which is the this one, and then go the other, the opposite way, do it for this rivet here, um, and then do the same thing on the other end of the rivet, uh, gear, drilling a hole. And then this one, of course, is exposed, so that one would be last, I guess. So, um, I, uh, I don't know. There's, I, there might be an easier way to do this, so I'm going to just play with it and see. But I'm going to take it over to the workbench and center punch these, drill them out, and then uh, go from there.
Okay, I got the rivets out. Uh, it was almost easier just to take my little grinder and cut them off. Because sometimes when you drill a rivet, it'll start spinning with the bit, and then you don't get anywhere, and that's what happened on both of those. So, so we've got a spring in here, and that's that one that I bought. Um, I'm just going to leave it in there so I know where its orientation is. Um, because that goes in a real specific way, and I don't know how much that matters, but if I put it back together the way it was, then I know it'll work, versus if I didn't. So, so I'm going to take this little shaft apart here. Okay, just kind of eyeballing things how they, they're supposed to look like. Lots of old grease in there. Let me grab the new one, see what it looks like. Square, so it comes in from the back like that. So I probably just need to go get another socket, set it on there and pop that guy out of there. Do that real fast. So I'll just set this guy on there. Let my hammer go. There. So in theory, I think there's expecting that. So that spring just released and this thing went flying. Um, doesn't hurt anything I guess. I wasn't expecting that and another piece just oh it's right here. Okay. So I didn't go very far. So don't do that. So when this gear was in there it was holding things but when uh, when it come out this thing went to flying. So we'll deal with that in a minute. So this isn't Coming out real easy so far. I don't know what that was. Whatever it was, I don't need it right now. Okay, so that's out. So that's really good on this to use a socket because you don't want to. This thing isn't very thick, so you're not gonna. You don't want to bend that up. So. Uh, that worked good, kept that thing in nice form. So that's garbage. I'm gonna go get a rag and clean this grease up and we'll pack it with fresh grease when we're done. Okay, got most of the little pieces cleaned up pretty good. Uh, the new shaft right here that goes into this piece was a little tight, so I got some 320 and just polished that up a little bit. Now. Fits in there snug, but isn't too bad. So I'm gonna take some grease and put some on that shaft before I slide it back in there again. That goes, there we go. So we got a nice, nice smooth fit now. And this guy will go over that. Uh, but now I gotta figure out how to line this gear thing back up and why it flew apart like it did. So I wonder if I just gotta manhandle it back to kind of where it was and then slide that guy back in there oh that's well, I guess that's all right as long as it's I don't think it can go any farther once it's to the end there from right. Yeah, so it's going to stop. As long as that gear doesn't come this way, uh, we're okay. That was part of that, was it? So, and this guy goes back on there. That's all looking okay. So the next thing you do is take this apart, clean it, and put the new spring in there. So I'm gonna mark where this little, that little thing turns there, just so I can put the new one back in the same spot. I don't know if that matters, but it might. Okay, I got the new spring in. It's a little bit bigger, so what I did was just get it started, and then I just started twisting it like a screw, and then it kind of sucked itself in there, and then I've got it lined back up there um, where it was. So I don't know how much difference that makes. But... Okay, so that's that, but I need to pack it full of grease before I fix it.
figure out how to put together. But so I got to figure out what I'm going to do for these rivets. I think I've got rivets, but I don't know if I've got the right size. So I'm going to look and see. Otherwise, I might have to come up with some. Go find some little nuts and bolts or something. Piece that back together. So I'll let you know. I find out here in a minute. So I didn't have any rivets that were going to fit. Looks like the closest these holes are is five thirty second. So I ran to our nearest hardware store and just picked up some 532nd machine bolts. I'm at the drill these out just a hair to get the bolts to go in, um, but I think these will be fine. Uh, my plan is I'm going to put two bolts, or one at a time, a bolt in this hole, cut it off just long enough to have the nut uh, on there, and then I'll be able to use that for these other holes, I think. I'll try one just to make sure. Uh, because there's not a lot of space between the gear and the plate so if i cut that off with just the nut i should be able to slide the nut in there and then tighten it in from this side and then i won't need to drill the holes through the gear um, to reattach this so that's my why is that not focusing sorry uh, so that's my game plan right this second and we'll uh we'll see how that works i got to take this apart and grease it though i still haven't done that since i know that's going to be a mess i didn't want to do that till i had a until my plans were set in stone. So I've had this thing together and apart a couple times now and what I've run into is it'll crank one way but it won't crank the other way and I think what the problem was is how I was assembling this. See how both spring tabs are where they are? I think where I was doing it before is this lower spring part was on the, op on the back side of this uh, this metal piece here. So just wanted to give you a close. I'm going to reassemble it. And if it works, this is, this was the cause. So when you reassemble this piece, make sure that's where the spring is in relation to this metal insert piece. Um, and then you should be okay. And here it is with the gear in there. So that kind of gives you an idea where the spring tabs are in relation to the rest of the pieces. Okay. With that last little tidbit, that was all correct. We're back to working and it cranks both ways like it's supposed to. So I didn't drill the holes through the gear like the instructions said. I went ahead and did what I uh, was planning and that was to put the nut um, behind in, in between uh, like that. And that did work. It's pretty tricky to get it on there, but I, I had this thing apart um, three times, so it's doable. I just had it laying like that and, and brought the bolt up from the bottom kind of was able to hold on to the nut in there but it is tricky it'd be a lot easier to drill the hole through the plate like the instructions say and then run the, the, the bolt the opposite way drop the bolt through and then the nut comes out on this side uh, I just thought I could do it so that's the way I did it and it'll be fine I need to trim this other bolt off still but uh, what I did is I put each one in this hole cut it off took it back out and then moved it to these other holes <clears throat> you can see I could have cut off a little bit more and it actually is rubbing just a hair but it's not really it's just barely scratching it which isn't going to hurt anything um, but I could have took a little bit more off of that and it would have been better but uh, no it's just that it works fine so we're all back together and uh, so the next step will be to put the door lock or the door handle mechanism in first and then I'm going to replace the follower guide on here real quick um, put the new nylon one on here and then that'll reassemble and then uh, lastly I plan to transfer these holes here for the armrest you know make a template to cut these out to put on that door and then we'll we'll be square so that'll be the those are my next steps I'll show you this real fast the the roller because I didn't know how these actually go on there but there's a keeper that holds these on. So inside here, you can see this one popping out. So you pop that keeper out and then this whole thing slides off. So you can see the little tab on there. And then this little thing slides in there and there's a groove on the back on the inside of that. So all these little pieces go in there, but the original one's metal replacements are all nylon. So um, you can see that keeper a little better there. That's, that's all there is to it pretty quick and easy I've decided to go ahead and transfer the cutouts for the armrests before I re uh, reinstall the mechanisms on the passenger door so 
it just stuck a heavy piece of paper on here, cut it out with a razor blade. I took that, that um, I don't know what you call it, a keeper tab or something. I took that one out, but it kind of bent it when I took it out. And I bought, I did buy three new ones. I didn't buy four thinking I didn't need to take these out. Um, so I'm going to leave that one in there and I went ahead and marked it as best I could. I think that'll be fine. Um, so I don't ruin that one, taking it out just in case I need that third new one for this hole. But anyway, so I'll pull this off. Um, and I just lined it straight up with the door edge in this corner because this isn't parallel to that. So I, I know this will be the same on both doors. So um, I'll just start at the top corner, make sure it's lined up straight, and then transfer the marks. Okay, I got these ones marked. Um, and I took a straight edge and measured. I actually put it straight along here, uh, parallel to that, and then came right up underneath this, this nut which is basically the same on both and measured across to reference and it matched. And I went ahead and did the T square against this edge here and down. And since this is angled, um, if it were very far off, this, the measurement wouldn't be correct. So, and it was correct on both spots. So I'm feeling pretty confident. I did mark where the door panel holes were the factory door panels, I think. Um, so I'm not far off from there, so it shows you. I mean, I am in the right vicinity. So I'll get these notched out and we'll go from there. placements um, installing these little guys I don't know if you can get a template for the location of these like if you have doors that don't have them I'm not sure what you do maybe you just mark them wherever you want reality you could probably put them wherever you want it doesn't really matter um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this door reinstalled I'll show you the process I've been using for that real quick and then uh, and that'll probably be it for this episode um, I'll just rinse and repeat on the other door, but it ought to be all the same process, except they don't have to do this on the other door. So uh, we'll, let's get this one stuck on. So here's what I've been doing um, to take them on and off. A couple car ramps, a few pieces of wood, just enough to prop it up. And there's not one single bolt in it right now. It's literally just sitting on that um, with the hinges inserted. So. So now I'll get some bolts started and then try to get the door to close and then I'll use some wood shims to go all the way around it and I'll show you what I do there. Okay, so this one's I think okay. I didn't really have to shim much of it. It acts like it's wanting to sit, I think, where I want it. I did put one down there. It was a little bit close. And then the door's coming out a little bit down here. Um, but I've not had weather seals on this thing the entire time I've had it. So I might need to come and adjust the door peg there, maybe raise this up or bring it in or something. I'm not sure. But uh, so now I'm going to call in from the driver's side and tighten the, the bolts down and we'll see if it opens and closes okay. Um, but otherwise this one will be done. I, I think on the other side I had to put some of these shims up over here too to kind of just get get the door cocked where it would stay put but maybe with the door seal on here maybe it's lining up a little bit better maybe, i don't know maybe i'm just getting lucky but uh so that's how i do it again just just these cheap door, wooden door shims just fine you know kind of just place them around as you need to so you have a gap all the way around um, this one right here is one of the important gaps because uh, i think i mentioned it earlier if it opens up it'll take your paint off right there so that one you want to make sure it's decent um, these are, you know, are important, but, uh, 
I, I think these here in the front are your, your big ones that you want to make sure you got a good space on. So uh, we'll tighten it down. Well, I ended up not getting it on the first try like I hoped. My gap down here was a little too tight and it actually chipped the paint off just a hair uh, when I first started to open it. So again, be very careful. So I increased that gap. Um, now it's open and closing nice and nice and firm, which is funny because it never had before. It always rattled because again, there was no seal on it. Now it's nice and tight. So I'd say that's a success. Assuming it doesn't whistle as we go down the road, which can happen. Um, so that's it for now. I'm going to get to work on the other door, but again, that's just rinse and repeat of this one. So you guys don't need to watch that. Um, again, thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button and like the video if you would. I'd appreciate it. We will catch you next time. Thanks.